Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today and it's been a while since I've made a YouTube video but hopefully in the next little while I'll kind of get back into it and continue to work on this How to Get Good at World of Worship series. First things first of course is I gotta update episode 8 and so this is sort of like episode 8.5. Because we have new modules, the new upgrade module, sorry, in uh, patch 0.9.1. Some of these modules are worthwhile to change your builds for. Some of them don't really do much. So let's take a look at the very first module we're going to talk about, engine room protection. So this is the combination of propulsion uh, systems mod 1 and steering gears mod 1. Is it useful? Honestly, the only ships this would be really useful are is those like sort of destroyers and ships with like super fragile um, engines slash rudder. And honestly, if you had those kinds of ships, you would probably go onto your captain and your first two point skill would have been last stand. So this particular module, not super useful, um, especially because it can be negated essentially by one two point skill. It is probably better to stick with damage control system mod 1 because especially as a destroyer, being set on fire means that your detectability increases, it allows people to continue shooting at you, especially when you're trying to break detection. So a little reduction to fire chance is probably more useful to you. Now, this slot, there has been some really interesting changes. And the first one is main battery mod 2 no longer has a penalty. This used to have a penalty to it where like, yeah, you got better turret traverse, but you lost reload speed. Now it's just straight 15% improvement to your turret traverse speed. And this is useful if you're you know, having a ship that has really, really slow turrets. So an example is, for example, Grimyashi. Grimyashi is just really bad in terms of getting its turrets turned around. However, with main battery mod 2 and then expert um, marksman, now her turret traverse is actually quite good. So this is definitely something that you can consider if you have ships with really poor turret traverse. The other one, of course, is if you're playing a destroyer and you have sufficiently good range on your torpedoes, but you want a bit more speed with no penalties, Torpedo Choose Mod 1 is also really, really useful. So, um, you know, I can definitely see people who are playing, let's say, like Fujins or Kamikaze Rs or whatever, opting for something like this, you know, free speed boost with no penalty, where if you normally took like Torpedo Acceleration, you're trading away um, range in order to get more speed. So that, again, if you're playing like a Torpedo Destroyer, really, really useful. Um, let's say if you're playing like, let's say, Gearing or Shema or anything like that, this module can be quite useful. There is one other new module, which is the A Guns Mod 1, and this reduces Priority A Sector preparation time not a very useful module uh, unfortunately it's just it doesn't do much um what it really actually has an impact on is the cooldown timer so you can take a look right now on a destroy for example when you hit the sector reinforcement you do five percent immediate uh, damage to the squadron and then there's a 10 second sort of ramp up time and then a 10 second cooldown time that particular module the a guns mod one knocks two seconds off the cooldown time not particularly useful. Um, there might be certain sort of very niche builds where I can say maybe, but otherwise not really. In fact, the only way I can see A Guns Mod 1 being sort of useful is if you opted for a sector reinforcement, you know, straight chunks of damage kind of build. But again, like there's not many ships that are going to be running that. Maybe if you were playing, let's say, Friesland, you know, you might want to go for something like that. But all in all, this module, not super useful. And then the next sort of major change in um, modules really sort of comes in when you're dealing with tier 8s and above. So the first one really is this slot, where instead of you know, uh, the old, uh, sorry, target acquisition module. There you go. Couldn't remember the name for a second there. You've now got torpedo lookout system. And this is in the same slot as concealment system mod one. And there's also a new one called ship consumable mod one. So torpedo lookout system guarantees torpedo detection of 1.8 kilometers. And that's it. The original buff to torpedo damage reduction is gone. It's just straight up 1.8 kilometer assured detection. And to sort of, you know, take this, in exchange for concealment systems mod one, not super worth it. Um, for me, especially uh, when you're talking to a lot of good players, I mean, these are the Unicom Plus players, um, concealment is life. 
you know, invisibility equals invincibility to a certain extent. Um, and so if you can reduce that concealment to the point where if you need to disengage or whatever, you'll fall off the tech, it's so much more useful than, you know, picking up torpedoes a little bit earlier. Because realistically, as long as you're aware of enemy destroyer positioning or possible positioning, you can negate a lot of torpedo damage. So not particularly worth it. The other one, which is ship consumable modification one, I've seen some people make the argument for like, some people have said, well, if you use it on a ship like Conqueror, you can heal that much more HP. Or if you use it for Montana, you can have your DCP last a little bit longer, especially when you combine it with the damage control module, then you can get like 30 second DCP. Again, it's kind of the interesting question, which is, yeah, you're getting back a little bit more HP, but because you're not very concealed, people are going to be shooting at you that much more and for that much longer. And are you really offsetting the damage that you're potentially going to be taking for the little bit extra that you're going to heal or the little bit longer that your DCP lasts for? And I, again, don't think so. So I think in this particular slot, even though we have options now, and I guess for some players, this could be something that they're going to be using. Um, you know, I can see some people make the argument that if you're playing like a secondary battleship and you're just YOLOing in, then maybe it's better to have longer ship consumable or you know for that torpedo lookout but i mean honestly i think most good players if you talk to them they're going to stick with concealment systems mod one now one again that concealment is key and second of all five percent worse enemy dispersion when they're shooting at you like this module is just stupidly strong and i really don't see this getting replaced so even though we got options, I think Concealment Systems Mod 1 is still going to reign supreme, and not many people are going to be going for the other two, at least among the top tier players. And finally, we move on to the tier uh, 9 and 10, slot number 6, and realistically speaking, I don't think anything's really changing here. Um, there is a new slot, uh, sorry, there is a new module for the slot, notably uh, the Auxiliary Armaments Mod 2, which combines the AA mod and the sort of secondary mod into one module, gives you better DPM with your secondaries, and it increases your AA damage. And again, don't necessarily see this module replacing anything else that you've been using so far. More than not, uh, main battery mod 3 is still probably going to stay king if you're playing, let's say, a BB, unless you have better modules here, like the legendary ones to take. Um, so Auxiliary Armaments mod 2, again, I don't really think is going to replace anything. The most notable module, like I said, is probably going to be for destroyers in slot number 3, where now they get free torpedo speed for no cost at all. Uh, I think this is going to be sort of the big notable change and for ships with really really slow turret traverse then obviously main uh, battery mod 2 is going to be beneficial finally we're moving on to carriers and carriers i think is where there's going to be uh, again a slight shift in terms of what modules you're going to be using um, nothing really happened in the first slot in the second slot again not really much change third slot again if you have torpedo bombers Aerial Torpedoes Mod 1 is probably something that you're going to be using. Why? Because it increases your torpedo speed by quite a bit, uh, 5%, for very little cost in terms of increased arming distance. And again, having slightly faster torpedoes allow you to drop a little bit further back, allows you to sort of mitigate some of that AA damage if possible. Um, so why not? You know, The other two really aren't that inspired. They just give you a little bit longer attack time which again, I'd rather have faster torpedoes. Other than that, um, again, for slot number four, nothing really changes on a CV. Slot number five, again, you know, are you really going to give up two extra plane uh, deck space plus better restoration time for squadron consumable timer, which increases your squadron consumable by a little bit longer? Probably not. Um, you know, you're probably gonna be sticking with flight control mod one. And again, not much changed for the final slot, um, Air Groups Mod 2, which gives just better HP pools for all of your attack aircraft. That's pretty much what you're going to be using all the way. So for CVs, the torpedo change in slot number three is going to be the big one. Um, and that's really it. Uh, you know, we got some new modules, but really aside from either very, very niche builds or situations where one mod might be better, a lot of the old modules and a lot of things that they were good at will probably stay pretty much good as the sort of default choice, where again, some very specific scenarios or very specific styles of play, maybe you would change you know, one small module for something else. 
But generally speaking, um, you know, I'm pretty sure if you talk to most of the top tier players in the game, um, not much is changing except for a few uh, little alterations here and there. Anyways, that updates all the upgrade modules. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, you can leave them in the comment section below and I will try my best to get to them. Of course, you can also hop on my Twitch stream when I'm actually streaming and ask me questions there and I'm more than happy to answer it live. Other than that, take care, have yourselves a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.